Hi, I'm Dr. Kaminsky for The Learning Scientist, and in today's uh, office hours video, I want to talk about this really interesting study that I read by Dalmar, Hertenstein, and Platt called The Impact of Cold Calling on Student Voluntary Participation. Uh, I'll, I'll give a uh, reference in the description so you can look at the study if you'd like. I should also mention that I came across a study reading a blog post from Learning in the Brain uh, where uh, they, they talked about uh, cold calling and whether or not it's something you should be doing in your classes. So cold calling, just to make sure we're all on the same page, is uh, when you just randomly call on a student in class versus asking them to volunteer and then only calling on people who volunteer. And there are a few pros and cons, some concerns with those two strategies. The concern about just relying on volunteers is that we know that retrieval practice is good, that the act of bringing information to mind is really beneficial for learning, and if we only call on those certain, those certain volunteers, only those students are uh, being able to retrieve information. There's also other concerns about maybe showing favoritism, um, reasons why certain students are going to raise their hand more often than other students, and uh, maybe building rapport with the entire classroom versus just those two or three students that always want to raise their hand and participate. So those are the reasons why people might want to move away from just voluntary participation and move towards cold calling. On the other hand, with cold calling, there's a concern that you will be stressing students out. It's stressful to answer questions when you maybe don't have the, uh, the answer ready. You might be shy or embarrassed to talk in front of people for whatever reason. And so the concern is that if you're cold calling students, you might be doing more harm than good because you're stressing them out. And we know that stress is generally bad. Aside from the obvious thing that we don't want to make our learning environments stressful or harmful for our students, obviously, um, we also know that stress has a really negative impact on learning and memory. So um, there's a debate about whether or not cold calling can be beneficial because you might be stressing people out. So this study, Impact of Cold Calling on Student Voluntary Participation, um, I like the study because they looked at cold calling in classes where there were high rates of cold calling and classes where there were low rates of cold calling. And they measured voluntary participation as well as comfort in voluntary partic participation. So regardless of whether or not you were called on, did you raise your hand more often? In classes with high amounts of cold calling, they found greater overall participation. Students volunteered more if they had been called on more often. Um, they also measured comfort with participation. Maybe students are volunteering more to try to get out of get, getting cold called on. They'll say, oh, I'm going to answer this question now so I don't get caught unawares later. Um, but I, maybe I still don't really like it. No, they found that students were much more comfortable volunteering uh, or voluntarily participating when they've been called on more often um, in the high cold calling classes versus the low cold calling classes. And when I read this, it reminded me of the debate around incorporating tests and quizzes into classes. And of course, in learning scientists, we love retrieval practice. Tests and quizzes are a quick and easy way to do that. I'll mention that cold calling is one way that you can also do retrieval practice. Retrieval practice doesn't always have to be a test or a quiz. It can be more informal, like a discussion or asking questions. Um, but the concern there is we know that tests can be stressful for students. We know that students have test anxiety. Um, so when we advocate for tests and quizzes, we advocate for low stakes tests and quizzes. Um, of course, high stakes are going to be very stressful and um, going to lead to all those negative impacts that we just talked about in, high, in stressful high stakes environments. And the easiest way to make a test or a quiz low stakes is to do more of them. Um, so in my classes, when I have quizzes, I typically have quizzes every day. And because they happen every day, your performance on any one quiz isn't so important. It's okay to get one wrong. It's okay if you have a bad day or an off day, you're gonna take another quiz tomorrow. So the relative importance of any one quiz or test when they happen again and again and again goes way down. But you're still getting the benefit of retrieval practice and bringing information to mind, but you're getting it without all of the pressure that comes uh, when you have a big high stakes test. So a cumulative final at the end of the year, maybe some big standardized tests that you need in order to get into some school or some program, right? Of course, those things are gonna be very stressful. And there are other mechanisms that we talk about when we talk about quizzing, 
but one of the reasons why we advocate for the low stakes quizzes um, and the frequency of the low stakes quizzes is we know that it brings the stress levels way down. People know what to expect, they know how to prepare for it, they, be, they become much more practiced uh, with the, the information, so it's generally beneficial. Um, the same thing tends to happen with cold calling. So the more you call on people randomly, the better prepared they're going to be for being called on, um, the lower the stakes for those things, because if you get the question wrong today, it's okay, you can try again tomorrow or maybe later on in the class period. So you don't feel quite as embarrassed um, as you would if this was your only chance to get something right. When I talk about stress and performance um, with my students, I usually bring up the um, performance arousal curve or the uh, Yerkes Dotson Law. And what that is, is just a general statement about how stress or arousal, so arousal um, being a, a term that describes what we call autonomic arousal. Think yeah, like think like fight or flight, right? That when you feel kind of your heart rate pick up and you start to sweat a bit, like you, you get that uptick in like you're you're much more awake and alert. Um, maybe it's stress, maybe it's general arousal. Um, your body's responses to that are pretty similar. And what we find is that there's this really interesting relationship where at first, um, when arousal goes up. So does your performance. So we have this like this kind of shape going on. So as performance, uh, sorry, as arousal increases, so does your performance. But it levels off and then has the, a negative effect later on. So if you are too amped up, if your body is going too crazy, if you're too stressed out, then we have these negative impacts of um, of stress that we talked about earlier. Negative cognitive impacts. Um, you, your memory starts messing up, you, you're having trouble paying attention, you get this tunnel vision. There's also, you know, physiological effects. It's not healthy to be stressed out frequently and for long periods of time. Um, and also just doesn't feel nice, right? In terms of mental health, uh, we, we don't want to be stressed out all the time. So with cold calling and with retrieval practice, the question is, how do we get into that nice, happy medium? So your your arousal curve is just enough so that you're awake, you're alert, um, your your performance is increasing, but not so much that we're going into the negative effects. Um, one of the ways to do that, one really easy way to do that, is just by increasing the frequency. So that's why I liked this study because it showed that it was the high rates of cold calling that led to the beneficial effects versus the low rates. Um, and the high rates of cold calling led to more comfort with the students, they volunteered more frequently, which to me demonstrates um, or suggests that they were perhaps more prepared for classes in general. That's what I find when I ask students about the frequent quizzes that I give. Um, they report to me that um, not only do they get the retrieval practice because they practice recalling information, they tend to know uh, what kinds of questions I'm going to ask, that it helps them figure out what information they should be focusing on because they're getting this constant feedback. And the third thing, which is interesting here, is they feel validated for the work they put in because they, if they do the work, come to class prepared, have, have thought about it a little bit, they'll be rewarded with getting a question right in the quiz or maybe getting a question right um, when I ask a question in class. So the same thing with cold calling. When students know that at any given point you could call on them, they will prepare more. And not only will they prepare more, they'll feel better about preparing. Um, it's kind of a bummer when you spend a lot of work um, doing the homework and reading and you come to class and you're excited to talk about it and then it doesn't come up, the teacher doesn't call on you, you don't get a chance to demonstrate your knowledge and you kind of think, well, that was a waste of time, right? So with both of these methods, with frequent quizzing and cold calling, um, and frequent cold calling, the frequency of it really promotes some beneficial study habits it also decreases the stakes for any given um, episode for cold calling or for the, the tests or quizzes, which in turn um, makes students like the class more and want to volunteer and participate more. So that's my little summary of the benefits of cold calling, specifically frequent cold calling, because again, if you just do this maybe as a one-off in class, that first day you do it, it it's going to be difficult for students. 
If you want to implement cold calling in your classes, I would recommend having a conversation with your students um, to, to talk to them about the benefits like we've talked about here um, and to let them know, hey, we're, this is a thing that we're going to be doing regularly, so it's okay if you're uncomfortable at first. Um, th that's all right. That's normal. Um, but, but we're going to push past it and we're going to work through that together. I think having a conversation can be really beneficial so that they don't get kind of turned off by it in the first uh, few classes if this isn't something that they're used to. Um, so yeah, so that's cold calling and retrieval practice and why you should be doing both as frequently as possible.